Shalom, everyone. We are continuing our limud of Sefer Malach and Beis. Uh, remember that the ten tribes have already been exiled, and we are in the final decades of Malchus Yehuda. Uh, Chizkiyo HaMelech was a very righteous king, but he was followed by his son Menashe, who ruled for over 50 years, who was a Russia. And Amain, Menashe's son, only ruled for two years. He was also a Russia. But then we have, almost like a nace, we have Yeshio HaMelech, who becomes king at the age of eight, and under the tutelage of Chilkiyo HaKayin, the Kayin Gadol, Chilkiyo is indeed Yermiyo HaNavi's father, Yoshio does what is Yashor B'Ene Hashem. And we read that a Sefer Torah was discovered, and it was open to the Teichacha. And Yoshio was Nisairer, that we have to do tshuva, or there'll be a chorban. And uh, they went to Chulda the Nevi'ah, hoping that she would show them Rachamim. And Chulda basically said, the only good news I can give you is that Yoshio is a tzaddik, so there will not be a chorban in his lifetime, but afterwards there will be a chorban. So I pointed out that Yoshio, instead of simply throwing in the towel, Yoshio wants to be Ma'ayrer Klal Yisrael to Tshuva in the hope that even though there's a Gezeira, Tshuva can rip up even a Gezeira Ra. And Perak uh, Chaf Gimel is about the story of Yoshio's Tshuva campaign. Vayishlach HaMelech Vayatsu Elav Kol Zikne Yehuda V'Yushalayim Yoshio gathered together all of the Sekenim of Yehuda and Yushalayim V'yala Melech Beis Hashem he went to the Mikdash, V'chol Ish Yehuda, V'chol Ish Yishlai Mitai, and everybody went with him. The Kehanim, Nevi'im, V'chol La'am L'mikaton V'ad Gadol. V'yikra V'yazneim es kol divrei sefer habris hanimtza b'veis Hashem. And he read to them all that is written in the sefer habris that was found in the Beis HaMikdash. So the Mitzudah stuff, it says, that Sefer Habris does not refer to the whole Sefer Torah, but it refers to the Teichacha, which is described as the covenant that God made with Bnei Yisrael, and he read them the Teichacha. He read to them the fact that the Torah itself says that if we don't do tshuva and we sin, there will be Chorban and Golas. Vayamayt HaMelech al HaOmud. And the Melech stood on a raised platform, similar to Hakel, which would be every seven years. That the Melech called on the people to make a covenant with Hashem, to be Makabel the Taira anew, to follow his ways, to keep his commandments, to heed his warnings. Eidvaisav means warnings. The chukim, even the mitzvahs you don't understand the reason for. And do it with all of your heart and with all of your soul, not perfunctory or complacent. To fulfill the words of the covenant that if we keep the mitzvahs, Klal Yisrael will have bracha. Vayamayit kol bris. And the people were makabel the bris. They were makabel it. They accepted it. They did shuva. Vayitzav hamelech es chilkiyo hakain agadol. And the Melech commanded Chilkiyahu, the Kayin Gadol. Remember, Chilkiyahu was Yoshio's tutor when he was a little boy. And now he's the Kayin Gadol. He is the father of Yermiyo Hanavi. Ves ha Mishnah. Mishnah means the second rank of Kohanim, the assistant Kohanim. Es Shemrei Hasaf. Shomrei Hasaf are kind of the custodians of the treasures of the Beis HaMikdash. That apparently, because during the reign of Menashe and Omain, the Beis HaMikdash itself was utilized for Avedah Zarah, so there were Kalim in the Beis HaShem that were Kalim that were made for the Baal and for the Asherah. And Yoshio commanded those Kalim to be taken out Vayisrefem, and they were burnt, so can't, apparently, again, it's a little difficult to understand exactly if they were metal, it's a little difficult to burn the metal, but be it as it may, they were destroyed. 
Michutz li Yerushalayim, Bishadmos Kidron, in the Kidrain Valley, okay, that is uh, between uh, Yerushalayim and the Harazesim, right, Kidron Valley, the Nasa Esafaram Beisel. And the ashes of these Kalim was carried all the way to Beisel. Now, again, Beisel is very important. Beisel, of course, was the place where Yaakov had his a wonderful dream. But Litzarenu, Beisel was also the site where Yeruvam ben Nevat built one of his two Egle Zohav. It was a Mokam Tuma, a Mokam Avedazara. And therefore, to be Mavaza the place further, to show that the Avedazara was garnished, uh, the ashes of the Kalim that were taken out of the Mikdash were transported to Beisel. Now, again, Geographically, this is a little difficult because Basel was part of the northern kingdom, Malchus Yisrael. Malchus Yisrael was already conquered and destroyed by Sancheirev. So Lechaira Yeshio didn't even have jurisdiction over Basel. And how were they able to go there? But apparently he, they were able to travel and dump the ashes in Basel. So that's one thing. Second thing. The second thing Yoshio did is he removed from office all of the Kamarim, that's the, the priest, the priestly Avodazara that the Malcha Yehuda had appointed, this of course would refer to Menashe and Amain, and who were sacrificing in Bamais, both for Rabbi Dezara and L'shem, L'shem Hashem. Uh, so he removed them. Now it doesn't say he killed them. We'll see that a little later. But he removed them. He made them stop what they were doing, as well as anybody, even if you weren't an official priest, that was sacrificing to Baal, Hashemesh, V'lerech, L'mazalais, uh, to the uh, to Baal or to the sun or to the moon or to the constellations or any of the planets in heaven. So uh, this basically means he stopped them from their worship. It doesn't say any other punishment at this point. Pasuk Vav, third thing he did, he uprooted the trees that were planted the Avayda Zorah from the Makam HaMikdash, he brought them outside of Yerushalayim, El Nachal Kidrain, uh, to the Kidrain Valley. By Yisrael Faisab and Nachal Kidrain, he burnt these Asheris in Nachal Kidrain, by Yardak Laafar, and he crushed the uh, burnt trees into ashes. Or ash, Afar means dirt, but essentially he uh, crushed it into very fine particles. Vayashlech es afara, and he took the dirt or the ashes of these burnt trees, and he threw them on the grave of Bnei Ha'am. Now Bnei Ha'am is not uh, defined; that means the people of the nation. But all the Mefarshim say this refers to Ovdei Avaydazara Yidden, who were buried in the area of the Kidron Valley. Right, that that to this very day. It, it's, it's an extension of Harazesim. There are Mesim that are buried there. And to be Mavaza them, he threw the ashes of the Asherah on top of their graves. Again, I, I don't understand myself uh, why the Chiluk, because once again, the Kalim that were taken out of the Mikdash that were burnt, their ashes were dumped all the way to Basel, which was the Mokam of the Ego Hazohov that Yeruvim uh, made. Masha'en Kain, the Asherah that was taken out of the Mikdash, was also burnt in Nachal Kidrain, but the ashes were not taken to Beisel, the ashes were dispersed locally over the Kivrei Avdei Aveda Zora. Why the Chiluk? Something to think about. Now, then it goes on and talks about his uh, Yoshio's campaign to eradicate Aveda Zora. Apparently there were prostitution uh, in the Beis HaMikdash. We know that this was done uh, later in the time of the uh, Antiochus as well. Uh, and here it happened all the way here. 
and he destroyed those houses of prostitution, and here it mentions as well that women would weave protective coverings for their beloved Asherah trees, and he destroyed all of those buildings. Uh, and then he brought the Kehanim from all of the Are Yehuda, who had unfortunately been Nichshal and Avedazara, Vayitame as Abama Sashir Kitru Shama Kehanim Migevad Ber Shava, and he desecrated. Again, it's a little strange. Uh, it does not say he destroyed, but he desecrated, meaning he was Mavaza. He threw on them dead animals and the like to kind of be Matame them, so they would no longer be suited. So he's Mavaza them. Uh, that the Kohanim, all the way from Geva to the north, to Beersheba in the south, v'notzatz es b'amay sa'ashar m'asher Pesach shar Yehoshua shar ha'ir, asher al small ish b'shar ha'ir. And then he physically destroyed the b'amays that were placed at the gates of Yerushalayim, and there was a gate that was called the gate of Yehoshua, who was the mayor, so to speak, of Yerushalayim, to the left as you're entering the shar. Again, there's a lot to be my eye in here, and the truth is, I did not see the Meforshim address it, why he does different things. It says, with respect to the Bamais that the Kohanim were Makriv, he desecrated them, but didn't destroy them. With respect to the Bamais in front of Yushalayim, he physically destroyed them. Why would there be a Nafgamina? But now we are told the following very interesting rule, which is Halacha Lamaisa. Ach, lo yalu kehane habamais el mizbach Hashem biRushalayim ki im ochlu matzais b'teicha heachayim. So Yoshio did not kill the kehanim that were makir b'bamais, but there was a disqualification that they were blacklisted. A kohen that served avaydazara even if he does tshuva, is blacklisted from ever serving in the Beis HaMikdash. Now, it's a little ambiguous. Is this only the Kohen that was Maktir on a Bama Liaveda Zara? Or even a Kohen who was Maktir on a Bama L'Shem Hashem? So we have a Machlekes on that. But Pasuk Tess is telling us that whichever category we are referring to, the Kayane Abamais, even with tshuva, are no longer allowed to bring korbanais in the Beis HaMikdash, but they can eat matzais b'teich achayhem. So here, the reference to matzais refers to menachais, right? The meal offerings after kemitza, after a chalik is burnt on the Mizbeach, kohanim eat the menachais. The menachais are not allowed to be chametz, not just on Pesach, the whole year. Menachais are generally not allowed to be chametz. There are some exceptions, the taida, uh, the shtei alachim of Shavuos. But other than that, uh, matzais means the menachais. And Rashi says, Hu hadin l'chol ha-kodshim. So why does the, why does the Pazak say matzais is a bit of a tzarechian? But basically the dichotomy is a kohen that was obeyed avod zara, or perhaps even if he was makter and a bama for shchut chutz is disabled from doing the Avaida, but is allowed to eat Kachim along with the other Kehanim. Vitime Pasagyod Vitime Asataifes Asher Begay Ben Hinam Lavilti Lahavir Ish Espinay Vyasbita Bieshlamailach. Adjacent to Nachal Kidrain is another valley, and this valley is called the Valley of Ben Hinam, and that's understood to be the entrance of Gehenna, and this was a place where they set up uh, a whole fire uh, in order to be Mavr Lamelech. And here, too, it does not say, again, I, I don't have an answer here, it does not say he destroyed it, but he was metame it with, with, with dead animals and the like, uh, that people could no longer use it to pass their sons or their daughters to Melech. Uh, 
El Lishkas Nasan Nasan Melech Hasaris Asher Beparvarim Vies Markavais Hashemesh Saraf Beyesh. So apparently, one of the idolatrous rituals that people had done was that as the sun would rise in the east every morning, people would ride horses towards the sun as if to greet the sun and bow down to the sun. So, what Yoshio did was, he took those horses out of commission that they would no longer be able to do that. Again, it's not clear, did he kill them or didn't he kill them, but he stopped the activity of the Susan uh, that the Malchi Yehuda had sent to greet the sun every morning. And this was, uh, even gives you a root here, Mibo Beis Hashem, they would leave from the Beis HaMikdash, El Lishkas Nasan Melech Hasaris Esherba Parvayim. Again, there was an official of the king whose name was Nasan Melech. That was his name. Uh, and he lived by Parvorim. Uh, Parvorim basically means a suburb. You know, his uh, place was a suburb east of Jerusalem. And they used to ride their horses from the Mikdash to that place to bow down to the sun. And he stopped that. Yes, Markavais Hashemesh, and the chariots that would go with the horses to greet the sun, Saraf Bayesh. Yes, a Mizbachos, a Sheral Gag, a Lias, Ochaz, a Sherosa, Malchi, Yehuda, Yes, a Mizbachos, a Sherosa, Menasha, Bishtei Chatzus, Beis Hashem, Notzat Samelech. And the Mizbachos that were on the roof of Ochaz's palace, that was his Chizkyo's father, that the Malchi Yehuda had made. And the Mizbeach that Menashe had made in the two courtyards of the Beis Hamikdash, here it says, "Notzat Hamelach, Yoshio did destroy, by Yoratz Misham, Vehishlech Esafarim Al Nachal Kidron." Once again, after he had it chopped up, uh, the ashes or the uh, the dust was thrown into Nachal Kidron. Again, there's a little bit of a kasha here, and that is. Bishlama, most of this stuff, this could have been constructed during the reign of Menashe, and Mimele, Yoshio, is the first person who is willing to destroy it. But Legabe the Mizbeach, it says it's on the Gag, on the roof of Ochaz's palace. Now, if the Pusuk means this was a Mizbeach that Ochaz constructed, then you have Akasha. Why was it still around? Chizkiyo himself eradicated the Avedah Zorah. So why didn't he eradicate this one? So it could be, I'll peep shot, that even though the Mizbeach was located on the roof of Ochaz's palace, it was not Ochaz's Mizbeach. Chizkiyo destroyed that, but it was a replacement to Ochaz's Mizbeach that Menashe had built, and Memele Yoshio destroys it. Yes, Abamais, Israel, Pnei Yerushalayim, and the Bamais all through Yerushalayim, Jeremimin, Laharim, Mashchis. That is to the right when you face the mountain of destruction. So again, this is a Lushan Genai. Haram Mashchis is actually Harazesim. But because it was contaminated by idolatry, it gets a derogatory name. And there were Bamais to the right, meaning if you're looking at Harazesim, it is to your right. Asher Bana Shlomo Melech Yisrael. These were ancient Bamais that Shlomo built for his wives who were over the Abayda Zara. Lash Tires to the idol Ishtar, Shikut Sedonim, who was the repulsive, disgusting, small g god of the Phoenicians. Vulichmosh, Shikut Moav. And Kamosh, that was the disgusting god of Moab, Ulamilkam, Toavas Bene Amain, the abomination of Amain, Time Hamelach. Now, here too, I would ask Akasha that if this is Avaita Zara that dates all the way back from Shlomo, number one, why didn't Chiskio destroy it? But I'll ask even more than that. Before Chiskio, there were at least two righteous kings who eradicated Avaita Zara, Asa and Yehoshaphat, and they are both after Shlomo. So it's a bit of a tzorechi, and whenever we encounter Avaita Zara that had been around for a long time, as opposed to the new Avaita Zara that Menashe might have built, the question is, why is it still around? Now, I had mentioned that Chizkiyo 
destroyed the Nechash Nechashes because the earlier kings didn't want to destroy something from Meishu Rabbeinu. But that would not be a teretz for the Avedah Zara of Shlomo HaMelech. The Shiber as a Matzevais. There were various monuments of Avedah Zara that he broke. The Yichro says to Hashem, he cut down all the Asheras. The Yamal as Makayma Matzme Sodom. And to be Mavazan, to be Matame, he threw the bones. He took out of the graves of the Avedah Zara and he threw their bones with the Avedah Zara. The Gam es Mizbeach Asher Bebeisel. And going back to Beisel, where Yeravim put up the Egel and built a Mizbeach. So even though that was not even in Yoshio's territory, he somehow got up there, or his Shalukim got up there. Asher Asa Yeravim ben Nevat, Asher Hechti Yisrael. Gam es Mizbeach Ahu ves Habama Notat. He destroyed. By Yisrael ves Habama Hedak Liafar. He burnt it down to becoming dust or dirt for Sarah for Asherah. He burnt the Asherahs. So, again, um, difficult issues. Obviously, the general idea is fairly clear. Yoshio is eradicating Avodah Zorah, but sometimes he burns it, and sometimes he smashes it, and sometimes he's metame it, and it would be Kedai to be Mayan to try to understand, although as I say, I'm not aware of any Mephorshim that really discuss this, why he utilized different methods of desecration and destruction. Uh, now, Yoshio is now in Beisel, which is not even his territory, it's the territory of Malchus Yisrael, which has been exiled. Vayifen Yoshio, Vayar as Akvar Meshersham, Bahar. He sees many people buried in the area of the Egel of Yeravam, these were over the Avodah Zara, and uh, it was a miyuchistic thing, a chashuv thing, to be buried next to the Egel. He actually had the bones exhumed from the graves. And he burnt those bones on this Mizbeach before he destroyed the Mizbeach. And he contaminated the Mizbeach. Now, this is very, very important. You have to have a good memory. Kidvar Hashem, Asher Kara Isha Lokim, Asher Kara Esadvar Ma'ela. If you have a good memory, all the way back in Malachim Aleph, an anonymous Navi told Yeravam ben Nevat that on this Mizbeach will be burnt the bones of those who worship this ego. That was hundreds of years ago. And now, this nevuah was fulfilled. Vayomer, Yoshio then said, So Vaisthachais Yoshio was mamish in Beisel, Ma atzian ala zashir raya. There was a certain kever that was marked, unlike the other kvarm that were unmarked. And he said, What is the matseva over this, over this uh, kever? And Rashi brings a medrash that it was surrounded on one side with thorns and thistles and weeds, because after all, the whole Malchus Yisrael was exiled, but on the other side, there was Hadassim and Besomim, as if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving a bracha to it. Vayemru Elaf. And they told him, it's not clear who told him, I mean, there are, there are no Yidden there, <laughs> the ten, unless you learn your Meyel brought back the ten Shvatim, so it's totally on that. Vayemru Elaf Anshe Yohir, Hakever isha lokim shabam Yehuda vayikras advar ma'ela shosisa al mizbeach mizbach beisel. The navi who actually prophesied that you would burn the bones on the mizbeach. That is the kever of that navi. Again, we're not given his name. Vayimer, and Yoshio said, Hanichu lo, leave him alone. Do not disturb his grave. He's a tzaddik. He's a navi. Ish al yana atzmeisav. No one should move his bones, even though we're uprooting everything else. Vayimaltu atzmeisav es atzmeisav navi yishar ba So, again, you have to remember the book of the, the, the book of Malachim Aleph. There was a maisa that there was a navi sheker from Shomron who gave hospitality 
to the Navi Emes, and the Navi Emes was not supposed to accept that hospitality. And because of that, the Navi Emes was killed by a lion and buried in this place. So in a sense, it's an Einesh Min Hashem on the Navi Emes. But when the Navi Sheker died, he was buried near the Navi Emes. And the Pusik is basically saying, given Yoshio's instruction not to uproot the kever of the Navi Emes, the Navi Sheker got saved as well because he was right nearby. And if you start uh, digging into one grave, you might dig up the other grave. So fortuitously, again, everything is Mina Shemayim, but fortuitous, fortuitously, the false Navi of Shomron was Nitzal by his proximity to the Navi Emes. Okay. Uh, Vagam, continuing Yoshio's campaign to eradicate idolatry, Vagam is called Bate Abamais, Asher Biare Shomron, all of the Bamais of the Malcha Yisrael, even though Lachar is not his country, Lahachis, they did it to get to anger Hashem, Heisha Yoshio, Vayaslam, Kachola, Maisa Mashrasa, Bebezel. The same thing he did in Bezel, he did throughout the former territory of the ten tribes. Now, then it says, Vayizbach is called Tehane Abamais, Asher Sham Ala Mizbachos, Vayisrof es Atzmais Adam Alayim, Vayashav Yerushalayim. So here it says he killed all of the Kaihanim of the Bamais, uh, and he burnt their bones on the Mizbeach. And then he returned to Yerushalayim. So again, it's a bit of a tzarechian. Which Kahane Abamas are we talking about? If he's talking about the Kahane Abamas in his Malchus, L'chaira, the Pasuk before, did not say that they were killed. It simply says they were disqualified from doing Aveda in the Mikdash. Elamai, these are the Kahanim of Malchus Yisrael, that were Meshamish in the Bamais, and they he killed. So really, you have two kashas. Kasha number one is Maishna, meaning why would the Kahanim in Malcha Shehuda not be killed and the Kahanim of Shimron be killed? Question number two is if the ten tribes were exiled, the Kohanim of, the, of those Kohanim of those Bamais aren't even here. Elamai, question two you can answer, like the Shita that Yermiyo was Machser the Ten Shvatim. Question one, however, is still going to be difficult, unless maybe, Lani Yastaiti, you might be able to answer that maybe the critical word, word is Lahachis, that the, the Kohanim in Shomron, they were doing it Badafka in spite, to spite God. As opposed to the Anshe Yehuda, they were not doing it for Hachis, they were doing it out of a taiva for Avayda Zara. Again, as I say, there's a lot of problems here that one could go through very carefully in terms of Yoshio's eradication of Avayda Zara. Okay. So, now that Yoshio was Matzliach in eradicating Avayda Zara, both in the south and in the north, Vayitzav HaMelech is Kola Om Leymar. Asu Pesach Lashem Aleikechem. Again, the, the, the idea that just like in Mitzrayim, we could not bring the Korban Pesach until we repudiated the Avedi Zorah of Mitzrayim by taking the sheep. So too, Yoshio says, now that we have been Mavayer Avedi Zorah, we can now bring the Korban Pesach. Again, interesting question, really. And what does that mean? Uh, Yoshio has already been king for more than 18 years. He was righteous from the day of eight, age of eight, when he became king. Uh, was it true that nobody brought a korban Pesach? So again, our assumption is that at least uh, in every time, except maybe during the reign of Menashe and, uh, and, uh, and uh, his son, Uh, it could be there were always Yechidim who brought the carbon Pesach. But since so many Yidin were of the Avedah Zara, they didn't bring it. So Yoshio is not Mechadesh. The, <coughs> excuse me, Yoshio is not Mechadesh, <coughs> the bringing of the carbon Pesach, but Yoshio is Mechadesh to get everybody to bring the carbon Pesach. 
And he says, everybody should bring the carbon Pesach, as, it's, as the Torah says. And it emphasizes how special this was. Ki nasa ka Pesach hazeh mimei ha-shoftim asher shoftu es Yisrael v'chol yemei mauche Yisrael u mauche Yehuda. There was not a Korban Pesach that had so much participation from the days of the Shaftim itself. Now, obviously, once you have a split between Malcha Yisrael and Malcha Yehuda, and the Malcha Yisrael didn't allow people to go to the Mikdash, so it does make sense that when you had the two kingdoms, most of the Jews did not bring the Korban Pesach. That does make sense. But why does the Pesach say there was no Korban Pesach from the days of the Shoftim? L'chaira, what about Bimei David? Bimei Shlomo? There still should have been a Korban Pesach. So again, it's a bit of a Tzorachian that it should have said there was no Korban Pesach like this from the days of David HaMelech, perhaps, rather than, say, from the days of the Shaifim. So the Emma says, Rashi does say a pshat that the last Shaifim is actually Shmuel HaNavi. So come to Chais, when we refer to Shaifim here, we actually mean the reign of David HaMelech. Now, L'chaira, you might say, but what, what did Yoshio do? L'chaira, he doesn't have the ten tribes either. So this is a raya to the Shita and Chazal that Yirmiyahu did bring back the Aserah Sashvatim and Memela, this was Azar Korban Pesach that we didn't have uh, all the way back uh, from the days of David. So Shaftim is Shmuel, is David. Now, still a little you know, close, but not quite close because the Chaira, why didn't you have a complete Korban Pesach in the days of Shlomo? So it could be that although potentially everybody could have brought, uh, there were people who were not bringing already. You didn't have the same Hislavas, there were Yidin who were not uh, from, so to speak. So this is the great, great celebration of the Korban Pesach of Yoshio, which is not just a great mitzvah, but it represents the repudiation of Avedah Zarah. Ki im bishmayna esrei shan al melech Yoshio, nasa Pesach hazah, l'ashem b'yushalayim. It was the 18th year of Yoshio's reign, and then it kind of chazers again. All of the ov and the yidon, these are the sorceries and witchcraft. The trufim, the private statues people had. Uh, in other words, not just the bamais and the matsevais, but the private of Edezara. Be'er Yoshio, Yoshio destroyed. Laman in order to fill, fulfill all that is written in the Sefer Torah that Chilkiyo Akain Hagadol found to Beis Hashem. There was no king like him before. Now that doesn't mean he was the greatest Sadik. It could be Chizkiyo was greater, David was greater, but the greatness of Yoshio was Asher Shav El Hashem. He did tshuva and brought Yidin to tshuva. V'chol levavai, v'chol nafshai, v'chol ma'aydai. Mimicking the language of Shema. All of his heart, all of his soul, all of his might. G'chol tairas ma'isha. V'yacharav. And after him, like come come over. That's actually Pashas. The kings after Yoshio were not righteous. Ach. But strangely enough, and it doesn't say why for sure, but I'll, I'll explain this. Loi shav Hashem mecharen Hashem did not retract from the fury that was already nigzer bimei menashe. Right? Chulda had told Yoshio, the only good news I have is it's not going to happen in your lifetime. Yoshio thought that shuva will rip up a gazar din. But it didn't work. Hashem did not change, did not retract from the Chareinaf. Asher Chora Apay Bi Yehuda. Al Kol Haka Asim Asher Yechisu Menashe, going all the way back to all of the ways Menashe angered Hashem. Vayaymer Hashem. 
Gam es Yehuda osir mi al panai. I will remove Malchus Yehuda from my face. Golos. Kasher hasi reisi es Yisrael as I did to Malchus Yisrael. Uma asti es oir azais. I will reject this city, Yerushalayim, at least temporarily. Asher bacharti es Yerushalayim that I had chosen to be my city. V'yes habayis. Asher amarti ye ashmisham. And the very bias in which I put my name in the bias, Asherah Sashchina, I will reject. So tragically, it didn't work. Now, the Gemara explains that the problem was Yoshio was a little bit naive. And that is, Yoshio thought people did tshuva. In point of fact, the tshuva was insincere. The Gemara, the Medrash rather gives an example that people would paint Avedah Zara on their door and they would bow down to it. And when Yoshio's chayolim would come into a house looking for Avedah Zara, they would open the door that would cover the Avedah Zara, which would be turned to the wall. And as soon as the soldiers left, they uh, closed the door and then they could worship the Avedah Zara. So the truth of the matter is, it's Taka Emes that the tshuva of Klal Yisrael could have changed the Gezar Din. But Yeshio was mistaken that the tshuva was not a tshuva shlema, it was only a tshuva mi bachutz and not a tshuva mi bifnim. And that is why Hashem's Chareinaf did not change. The Yeser Divrei Yeshio of Chalasherosa and all the other exploits of Yeshio, this is the familiar formula we have, Halo Haim Kesuvim Al Sefer Divrei Hayamim L'Malcha Yehuda This is explained in Divrei Hayamim of Malcha Yehuda. As I say, it's not clear if this refers to our Sefer Divrei Hayamim or some other historical book that we don't have that does not have Kedusha. Now, we're now going to go backwards a little bit and describe the death of Yoshio, the tragic death. Biyamav, in Yoshio's lifetime, Ola parai nechai melech Mitzrayim, there was a paro in Mitzrayim who was known as paro necho. So necho might be a name, but Chazal, a darshan necho means he was paro the lame. He was a lame paro, a crippled paro. And the Medrash has a whole arichus. This is the Targum Sheni to Megillus Esther, that Shlomo HaMelech had a very, very beautiful, amazing throne that had six steps, and each step there were statues of lions and other animals that would kind of rotate and turn and lift you up to the next step. This was described in Malachim Aleph, and Paro Nechai somehow wanted to go on that throne and he wasn't worthy and instead the lion turned the, no, the, the golden lion turned smote him on the thigh made him a cripple but be it as it may of course it's a little strange that uh, this is hundreds of years later so uh, we don't know exactly how he got access to the throne of Shlomo but it says that Paro Necho wants to wage war against Assyria which is northeast of Eretz Israel. He wants to go all the way to the Euphrates. He does not want to wage war against the Jewish people, but he wants permission, so to speak, to go through Eretz Yisrael in order to get to the Euphrates to wage war with Ashur. Ashur is still a world power. It's amazing. Even though Sancheirev lost uh, all of his army, but apparently there were enough reserves that he could reconstitute himself. Now, Paro was trying to be diplomatic. Uh, he asked Yoshio, do you give me safe passage? But Yoshio refused. Yoshio wanted to wage war against him because Yoshio said that the Torah says if we keep the mitzvahs, the Torah promises us, Cherev Savor Biartzachem. There will not be a cherev, a sword that will go through the land. And that doesn't just mean a cherev shel muhamma, but there will not be a foreign nation on the way to fight somebody else. So Yoshio was so batuach in the tshuva of the people that he thought they were zeicha to the blessings of uh, the teichach if you keep the mitzvahs, that even though Yirmiyahu told him, let Paro go, 
Yoshio did not listen to Yermio, and he went to fight Paru Necho, Vyamiseu B'Megidai, that's the center of the country, that Paro Necho's army murdered Yoshio HaMelech in Megidai, Kiraisai Aisai. Indeed, we are told that the fourth parak of Eicha, Eicha Yuam Zahav, How Has the Gold Dimmed, was not written about the Beis HaMikdash. It was written about the death of Yoshio. It's, it's Yermio's hespit on Yoshio because Yermio understood that with, with Yoshio's death, the Chorben Beis HaMikdash is inevitable. There's no way to stop it. There's not going to be a leader that could be Myra people to Tshuva. And Yoshio was killed. And by the way, if you have a good memory, uh, one of the kinos of Tishabov is about the Malchus of Yoshio and the death of Yoshio. V'yarkivu avadav meis b'megidai. And his avadim carried his dead body from Megidai. V'yaviyu Yerushalayim. They brought it to Yerushalayim. V'yikbaru b'kvurasai. And they buried him in his uh, proper grave. That's the kever of the Malachim in Ir David. Vayikach amaoretz es Yehoachaz ben Yeshio. So this implies this was not a minoi <coughs> of the Sanhedrin, but the common folk decided to take Yoshio's son, Yehoachaz, Vayimshechu Esai, and they anointed him. The Gemara and Kresos tells us, although a melech ben melech, does not have to be anointed, but because Yehoachaz was not the oldest son, but for some reason people wanted him, so because of Machlaikas we do Meshicha, V'yamlichu I say Tachas Oviv, and Yehoachaz became the king. Remember, we are dealing really, really with the uh, two minutes to midnight. This is kind of the end of the day. Ben Esrim B'Sholei Shana Yehoachaz was only 23 when he became king. Shleisha Chadashim Malach B'Yushalayim. He was only a Melech for three months. Shem Imai Chamutal Bas Yermiyahu. This is not Yermiyahu Navi. Milivne. Vayas Harabi Eine Hashem. He was a Rasha. Kachayel Lasher Asu Avaisav. But remember that Paro Necho now has kind of control. He didn't quite conquer Eretz Yisrael, but he's calling the shots. V'yasreyu paro nechai berivla b'yaretz chamas mimloch b'yushalayim. For whatever reason, paro nechai killed Yoshio. He didn't want Yehoachas to be king. And uh, he was uh, in Rivla. Rivla is north. This is after he went to fight Melech Hashor. V'yitein einesh ala aretz meir kikar kesev v'kikar zahav. And Parai put a tribute on Eretz Yisrael that they had to give him, presumably this is annual, a hundred talents of silver. That's Remember, a kikar is several hundred pounds. A kikar of Zohav. Vayamlech paro nechai es el yokim ben Yoshio, tachas Yoshio aviv. Again, it's not clear why Paro liked one more than the other, but Parai deposed Yehoachas, indeed he had him killed, and he substituted for Yehoachas another son of Yoshio, whose name was El Yochim, Vayasev Yehoyakim. But Paro changed his name to Yehoyakim. Again, the Rishanim explained that this is Paro's way of showing that you're totally controlled by me, you're a puppet. I take away your name, I give you another name. V'yes Yehoachaz, lakach v'yavah Yerushal Mitzrayim v'yam Hashem. Yehoachaz was taken to Mitzrayim and he was killed. Well, v'yam says as he died there. Now he was a young man, so the assumption is he didn't die of natural causes, he was killed. V'akesev azov nasan Yehoyakim l'parei, a Yehoyakim, who is a puppet king, that's the second son of Yoshio, uh, gave all the tribute to Parai, but he didn't want to spend his own money. Nagas 
Esam Oretz, Los Esaparu Nochos. So I was making the point that he didn't want to give his own money, but he imposed taxes on people to meet the tribute. Now, what about Yehoyakim as king? So, Ben Esrim Vechame Shana Yehoyakim B'Malchus. So it's interesting. Yehoyakim was 23, Yehoyakim was 25. So the truth of the matter is Yehoyakim was older. So it's not clear why the Amorites wanted Yehoyakim. Maybe, indeed, Yehoyakim was more independent of Paro. And that's why Paro deposed him and uh, went back to Yehoyakim. Achas Esrei Shana Malach B'Yushalayim. Yehoyakim was king for 11 years. The Shemi Mai Zavuda Baspadaya Min Ruma. So again, uh, he and Yehoachaz are only half brothers. They have different mothers, same father. Vayas Hara Bienei Hashem Kachayel Asher Asu Avaisav. Now this is kind of low key. It just says he was a Russia. In fact, the Gemara in Sanhedrin talks about the unbelievable riches of Yehoiakim. In fact, it's a little schwer why the Pusik doesn't say he was the worst Russia of all of the kings. It mentions, I mean, it's not even polite to say, that he was chaykek, he engraved or tattooed the Shem HaMafayrish on his male organ, and he would urinate to be Mavaza Shem Hashem. This was Yehoyakim, and Yehoyakim was Melech for 11 years.